Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on Cobbler's Vlogs where today is we are approaching the end of a decade so myself and Will are going to be looking back at the best players who have played for the Cobblers over the last 10 years by choosing our team of the decade. Um, I'm going to go first with my team uh, then you'll see Will a little bit later on with his team. So what we're waiting for, let's get into my Cobblers team of the decade. Okay, so for uh, my team, I'm going to be playing the 3-5-2 formation, three central defenders, um, five across midfield. It's going to be two centre mids, a sort of uh, player that's sort of behind the striker and then the two wingers. Um, so my first player is going to be the goalkeeper. He's in Will's team as well. I'm going to spoil that one for you. I think he's going to be in everybody's Cobblers team of the decade and it's Adam Smith, uh, a fantastic servant to the club when he was here for the two or three years that he was here for obviously was brilliant in the title winning season saved us and won us so many games that season as well so Adam Smith has to be uh, everybody mine and everybody else's goalkeeper uh, for the defenders I haven't included any fullbacks I've gone with three centre backs that have been uh, I think even better over the decade for us my uh, not necessarily left centre back, but we'll go with that one first. Is going to be Aaron Pierre. Uh, he was here obviously last season, was absolutely fantastic, and the season before as well was uh, absolutely fantastic for the two or three years, two years I think it was that he was here. Um, the fans loved him, I loved him, so Aaron Pierre has to be in the uh, Cobblers team of the decade for me. Uh, the central centre defender is another one that's played for us very recently, is playing for us now, and it's Charlie Good. Again, he's been here for just over a year now, but he's already become a fan's favourite and he's been absolutely superb for the year that he's been here as well brilliant central defender and then another one the right centre back you could say is uh, going to be from the title winning season and that is Xander Diamond the Scottish big beast himself uh, for me was the uh, sort of defender that I would if, if you sort of said name probably the best defender from that season I'd probably have to say Xander Diamond to you we had the likes of Ryan Cresswell Jason Taylor etc um, but Xander Diamond is the one that would stick out in my mind so in go Adam Smith and uh, my three centre backs Aaron Pierre Charlie Goode and Xander Diamond. Now this sort of the start of this decade was the first season where I sort of followed the Cobblers. Uh, the 2010-11 season was my first proper season ticket uh, at the club and the one player that I remember from that season that everybody remembers from that season is my right midfielder and that is Abdul Osman. The man that silenced the cops scored that winning penalty against Liverpool uh, at Anfield back in the 2010, 22nd of September I think it was, I still remember the date. Um, so Abdul Osman has to be in there on the right wing. On the left wing, the magician himself, the man with a wand, both feet are just wands, um, the Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, whatever you want to say, of the lower leagues. He sat at Sheffield United, not really doing much since he's left, but Ricky Holmes has to be in there as my left mid Fielder. So Abdul Osman on the right, Ricky Holmes on the left. Uh, got his big move to Charlton, obviously, after uh, winning the league with us as well and was crucial to that title winning season, along with Adams on the right-hand side. But we'll get on to Nicky Adams a little bit later on. But my wingers have to be Abdul Osman and Ricky Holmes. Uh, in the middle of the park, we're going to have sort of two central slash defensive uh, midfielders. The first one is Luke Guttridge. Um, a playoff uh, season where we got to the playoff final. We won't talk about what happened when we got there. But obviously Luke Guttridge pretty much got us there. Uh, it was nil-nil in the first leg against Cheltenham. In the second leg, we have a quick throw in. Take it quickly. Luke Guttridge chests it down. Fantastic volley um, over the keeper into the back of the Cheltenham net, which is what essentially sent us to Wembley. And again, Luke Guttridge was one of the best midfielders, if not the best midfielder uh, at the club when he was here. Um, the man partnering him... Um, I think most of you would probably kill me if I didn't put him in the team and I have to put him in the team because of uh, how he was when he was with us and that is John Joe O'Toole. Signed him in 2014, obviously left this year in the summer of 2019 and uh, a true hero, club legend, everything. Uh, there wasn't a Cobblers fan that didn't love John Joe O'Toole. Obviously at the end it was time for him to move on but yeah, was fantastic in League 1, League 2. Uh, was just an all-round fantastic, brilliant um, midfielder that we needed and was a proper leader as well. So John Joe O'Toole has to be my central midfielder. The attacking midfielder sort of just sat behind the two strikers that we're going to mention in just a moment. Uh, again, one from sort of the start of the decade as well, uh, one that I remember was fantastic. He was brilliant in that game at Anfield as well. That was sort of when he was coming through uh, the youth team. He's currently playing championship football as well now with uh, Wigan as well, so he's uh, done really well in his career. And that is Michael Jacobs. I remember uh, a couple of, there was one hat-trick, I can't remember when it was or who it was against, uh, but there was a hat-trick that he scored in one game um, that I really remember stands out in my brain, in my mind, because it was three fantastic and well-taken goals as well. So Michael Jacobs, another one that has to be in my team 
of the decade. So the midfield, Ricky Owens on the left, Abdul Osman on the right. The two in the middle are Luke Guttridge and John Tarotal with Michael Jacobs behind the two men that I think, again, everyone's going to put in their team up front next. So yeah, my two strikers... I don't think there's any two that you could choose apart from Mark Richards and Adebayo Akinfema. Mark Richards obviously had two or three spells at the club as well. He's been fantastic in all of them. Crucially, our top scorer in that title winning season as well. Adebayo Akinfema, he's a club hero. He's a club legend. Um, he said, there's sort of been interviews that he's done where he said, you know, if there's one club he could go back to, it would be Northampton Town. So, Bayo... We're still ho open to have you, mate. Um, if, you, if you're watching this and want to come back to the Cobblers, please do. But yeah, Adebayo Akinfenwa has to be in my team of the decade. Um, I did sort of make a bench, just sort of a list of sort of honourable mentions. Uh, Nicky Adams, obviously, who I mentioned earlier. Nicky Adams would be on the bench for me. David Buchanan, would, David Buchanan and Brendan Maloney, two legendary fullbacks, would be on the bench for me. But I had to go with the three central defenders because I wanted the more attacking players in my team as well. So yeah, Adams, uh, Buchanan, Maloney has to be in there. The likes of Billy Mackay as well, who's another one of the heroes from Anfield. He's probably got to be in there. Um, a couple more that I can't really think of off the top of my head right now. Um, sort of Ryan Cresswell probably should be in there. Kelvin Langmead, I think uh, a lot of people would have him in their team. I've not put him in. Um, but Kelvin Langmead's probably another one that a lot of people uh, would consider for their teams as well. Ben Tozer, uh, the likes of people like that as well. But that is my team of the decade. Just to go through it in full again, it's Adam Smith in goal. Three central defenders of Aaron Pierre, Charlie Good, and um, I know you said Jordan Turnbull there. Um, Xander Diamond, the two centre mids of Luke Guttridge and John Joe O'Toole with Michael Jacobs just in front of them. Nicky Adams and Abdul Osman bombing down the wings with Adebayo Akinfenwa and Mark Richards up top. So yeah, that is my team of the decade. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. I'm going to pass over to Will now, who's going to um, go into his team of the decade. Some of the players are in my team. Uh, he's gone quite in depth with it as well. So uh, you can hear about um, why they're in my team as well. He gives you all the stats and stuff like that. So yeah, over to you, Will. Let's hear your team of the decade for 2010 to 2019. Here we go. Cheers, Matt. Right, now on to my best team of the decade. Disclaimer before this video goes out, when everyone goes, oh, um, I really, I've been supporting the Cobbler since I was a little boy, back when we had um, Calvin Langley, Michael Jacobs, kind of at the start of their career, more than Michael Jacobs, uh, when we used to call them crackers, when I used to sit in the East Stand. Um, I was never such a big Cobblers fan until about five, six years ago when I started becoming a ball boy. Uh, now I've got a season ticket. but So a disclaimer to, if I've missed out, people like Osman, I think his name is, from the Liverpool game. I was only young, so I wasn't really in depth with the football at such a young age but now I've grown uh, over time and my football knowledge has grown um, so a disclaimer um, so if people go oh why is he in your best team of the decade because I wasn't old enough uh, and also the facts and the stats and everything is from Wikipedia um, so there's some of the stats may be wrong so please if they're wrong comment below uh, and I apologise for that but let's go on and look at my best uh, team of the decade starting off with defence and goalkeeper so when recording this video, I haven't uh, seen Matt's team, so Matt might have the same team, might have a completely different team. But in goal, I think it was only obvious it was Adam Smith, the man um, who we signed. Uh, great, great man, uh, Adam Smith was. He, um, you know, he was a solid keeper for us. Uh, he was very uh, crucial to the year we went up. Um, you know, I couldn't find the clean sheet stats, but... Uh, he made a lot of clean sheet saves, made a lot of clean sheet saves, made a lot of saves to secure him clean sheets. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was kind of signed behind the uh, the scandal of, of what occurred him at Leicester uh, and to give for him, for us to give him a chance and to show his talent um, was, was great for us. And then, of course, he got released uh, in the year of League One and uh, he found himself at Bristol Rovers. And since then, he's got himself a forest screen and he's starting to be a regular there. So, um, Adam Smith will always be in our heart. 94 games, he played for the Cobblers in all competitions while he was at the football club. So, uh, great from Adam Smith, uh, great keeper. Um, not much to say, really. For him at uh, left back, uh, I'll basically just come with the 4 4 2 because it's standard. At left back, it has to be Mr. David Buchanan. 187 games for the Cobblers, one goal against Rochdale. It was 106 consecutive games, if you can remember what a player Buchanan was in the title winning season, especially um, as time grew. Uh, he was released last season, um, everyone loved him, but um, if we're gonna move to the next step, Buchanan had to move ways, uh, and he was a great player. 
but I think age was getting on to him and players were also skin past him more. But he was so much more defensive. I think Keith Curl wants to play attacking, so that's why Buchanan doesn't suit the role here at the Cobblers. But what a player um, Buchanan was. And, uh, 187 games for a club, just says it all really. Um, great left back, always been a cobbler's history. Uh, I think he's still in Northampton, he's moved to Northampton. He's at Chesterfield, now a league below. They haven't started well this season, but what a player David Buchanan is. Um, you know, uh, a goal, don't know how many assists he got, but he definitely got a few assists. Uh, a team player, f full of passion, full of, you know, for the fans and what a player he was. Um, yeah, not much really to say apart from that. So next, the first centre-back has to be Xander Diamond. 125 games, four goals uh, for the man. He, uh, again, crucial uh, for the winning the title season. I think that's going to be a common theme throughout this video, uh, especially for me and Matt. Um, you know, he scored against West Brom, um, Manchester United, ruining his back pocket. Um, the memories I can remember of him. And he was such a nice man. I, um, you know, when I was younger, I went to Amazon Park meet up and, chat to Zander and he was such a nice guy and um, of course he's you know I don't know what he's doing now in Scotland but he was a very very good set of back with him and, and, and Rod and uh, Lou and I Tanya we had him in, in the end of League One and uh, he, he's he's a very very good player uh, Zander Diamond and I'm surprised he's not playing now Mansfield didn't really work out for him with the injuries and that uh, but yeah Zander Diamond is on my list joining him at centre back uh, I was starting to get into the Cobblers at this point, and I feel like Twitter has kind of swayed me to this uh, Kelvin Langmead. It was him and Aaron Pierre very, very close. Uh, Kelvin Langmead uh, is my joint set about with him. 79 games, 11 goals, which is not bad for a centre-half, but Kelvin Langmead do used to play striker, so on the occasion, if we're 2-1 down, Kelvin Langmead went up striker, as I can remember. Uh, a very, very good player Kelvin Langmead was. Uh, got the job done. Uh, sign of him, Peterborough, if I am correct. Um... Again, very, very good. I was too kind of young to really chat about, not about him, but I think his record says it all. I think he was a great centre-half. Um, you know, we weren't really doing anything under him, um, but he was in, you know, he was a he was a, he was a centre-back you, you could rely on, uh, and you knew that with Kelvin at the back, it was comfortable. But that back four, uh, Angoli, I think, in this time, was absolutely uh, solid, and we had no problems. But let's move on to the midfielders. So, on to the midfielders now. We're going to start off with on right midfielder. Um, he played both wings. I think Matt, if Matt didn't say him, what's he doing with his life? It's Mr. Ricky Holmes. What a man he was. We signed him um, on loan till the end of the season from Portsmouth for the second half of the season in League Two. What a, He kind of showed us what a player he was and then secured the signing and what a player he was. 53 games, 16 goals. Uh, and in the title winning season, he got nine goals. Uh, eight assists, and that doesn't even say how well he played. Uh, 17 goal contributions there, but he played so much better than that. Uh, he was so so good. Um, was Ricky Holmes? He was, he was so energetic. Him and him and Nicky Adams on the wing, they just switched all the time. Defenders didn't know who to mark. Um, both were left foot, right foot. Were were co so comfortable, and he was um, he was excellent. Uh, Ricky Holmes was, and and his feet his feet were just you know it was something else and. Sadly, he uh, he wanted to move elsewhere, and he got moved to Charlton, and, and Charlton done really well for him. He got moved to Sheffield United back with with Chrissy Wilder, and, and now he's just sitting with Sheffield United in the Premier League, not really doing anything. Um, but Ricky Holmes was always class. Um, I really would love him back. I don't think he's any time like he is now. But what a player he was, Ricky Holmes, and and he's just his his he how he played was just honestly it was amazing. You know, you got him the ball when you were just like, here you go. Him or Nicky Adams, um, and to lose both of them in the way we did was a big struggle. But we're going to get later on to Nicky Adams. But uh, joining him, we'll do the other winger. Like I said, Nicky Adams uh, for the other winger. His first spell at the football club was the title winning season. 45 games, 3 goals, 13 assists. I think that is correct. Um, uh, what a player. Again, uh, one year, uh, of course, he, he was going to stay longer, but family reasons he moved elsewhere but him and Ricky Holmes they were just you know right foot left foot you know they were arguing over who took what because they were both so fantastic um to have both of them players at a football club it kind of just you know just any striker would be delighted to have Ricky Holmes and Nicky Adams in their prime time in that season anyone we could have came in and scored goals under him because they literally knew where to put the ball I uh, think the technical ability was fantastic and, and the way they just you know with the fans and they were always passionate especially Nicky Adams um, 
fantastic from both of them. But no, Nicky Adams has to be in the side. Uh, and this season, of course, he's back at the Cobblers this season. Apparently, during the Wikipedia, 24 games, he's played in all competitions, seven assists, uh, six assists away from what he was at the Cobblers. And I definitely think he'll get double figures this season. Uh, he started really, really poorly. Um, he wasn't, how to put this, a poor Nicky Adams is still a good Nicky Adams, but compared to how good he was, he was really poor at the start of the season, but he's starting to fire him in now. Uh, but let's go on to the centre mids, starting off with, of course, John Joe O'Toole has to be in there. 194 games, 35 goals to the Cobblers. He's played centre mid, he's played striker, he played behind the striker. He played everywhere. It was a Jimmy Field has to bank behind the striker kind of tactic. Wherever he played, he was an animal. Um, he was cobblers in a nutshell. That's what Animal Cormac is this season. But John Gerotol, everybody loved John Gerotol. Anything he did, I think it kind of got to a point really that he made a pass. Everyone was like, yeah. Um, but John Gerotol was a class player. He was John Joe. He, I could just chat for hours and hours of John Joe. He was two foot in everyone, and that's what everyone loved. And but he knew how to score a goal. Um, he knew how to defend. He was just that midfielder that everyone loved. Um, he's now playing League One football as a centre-back for Burton. And hopefully when we play him, he doesn't do that well. But John Jotel has to be in this team. Joining him up in centre-mid again, like Kelvin Langmead, I was starting to come through with this um, Cobbers fan. I was starting to grow as a Cobbers fan with Michael Jacobs at the line. 100 games, 15 goals for the boy who now plays championship football for Wigan Athletic. Um, I can't really remember much of him. Crackers was the nickname. He had a great foot on him. Um, right foot. Uh, he was a set-piece taker, I can remember. Like so Andy Holt was in that team, if that's me being absolutely crazy or not. Um, but yeah, um, Michael Jacobs... Uh, very good, good player, like I said. I can't remember much of him, I was only young, but what a player um, Michael Jacobs was. Uh, and he's done so well since leaving us. So, great from him. But, we've done the defence, we've done the midfield. Let's look at his, who's leading the line as the two strikers. Now for the forwards, second time recording this best at the first time. We're going to start off, of course, both strikers have, two, have, have, had, have had two spells at the football club. First one, Andy Bayerak and Fenwar. The machine, the beast, they called him. He's got a book about him, calling himself the beast. He is a beast. Two spells at the football club. His first spell, 95 games, 39 goals. His second spell, 93 games, 35 goals. Nearly 200 appearances for the Cobblers. Adi Bayerak and Fenwar. What a player he was. The amount of fouls he got against him because of his body size uh, was ridiculous. But he's cutting it at Wickham Wanderers in League One, who are top of the table. Um, so there's no chance we're going to get him, hey? Um... But what a player Adi Bayouak in Fenway was. Um, and I would love to have him back. A disagreement with him at AD Booth would cost him a start at... Uh, gosh, I just thought <laughs> that cost him a start at the um, playoff final against Bradford. But never mind what a time we had under him. And joining him up top, of course, is Mark Richards. His first spell was 66 games, 13 goals. His second spell, 144 games, 50 goals for Mark Richards. A player who was excellent. Um, played with so many strikers. You, know, you probably got interview him how many strikers he played up top of him. Uh, what a time he had against Sheffield United. Uh, when they went on to win two one, but what a bang it was from Mark Richards. What a player Mark Richards was. Um, but that's uh, that's it. You know that that team um, was amazing. If we had that team right now, champions. If they're all in their prime, we're at League Two. Um, but Matt has done a bench. I think of some players now: Aaron Pierre, Matty Taylor. Uh, Matt Grimes, um, James Collins, Dominic Carver Lewin, John Marquis, a lot of players. I could list, I could go on this video, it could be a podcast. Um, but there's so many players, I hope, and Matt's probably gone into more detail with them, but a lot of them players were very, very close to making this team. But that is my team of the decade. Thank you very much for watching. Um, make sure you watch, if I don't know if it's out yet or whenever it will be out. The worst team of the decade. It's going to be a funny one, an interesting one, and I hope you guys have had. And whatever you're watching this, if it's already New Year or it's coming up to New Year, I hope you had a great year, a great decade, and hopefully next year we're going to be in um, League One. And hopefully in a decade's time, if me and Matt are still doing Cobbers vlogs, we'll be in the Premier League. Yeah. Anyways, guys, hope you have a good year, good New Year, and I'll see you all soon.